ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वासुदेवा हेलो फ्रेंड्स I'm going to read chapter, or it's from chapter two of the Bhagavad Gita, but this is the twenty-fifth stanza or sloka. The soul cannot even be pondered by the reasoning mind; it, the self, is unmanifested and formless. Realize this truth, and abstain from lamentation. Arjuna is lamenting the fact that he has to slay these uh, um, relatives, cousins, his own qualities that he thinks of as his own family of consciousness, which are really those things which pull him down. But the thing is that all of these depend also on the reasoning mind, because what the intellect does is break everything up like a jigsaw puzzle. Everything seems to be in pieces, and so the the reasoning mind can never bring you to the reality there's always it's like a jigsaw puzzle in which there's one too many pieces and you just can't figure out where to put it the reasoning can only take you so far it's sort of a halfway station but no great achievement no great discovery if whether scientific or mathematical or anything can ever uh, bring you the truth you can only take you it can only take you to a certain point and after that the intuition has to come in reason can tell you about tell you about things but it can't give you the experience of things it can tell you about the atom but it cannot you cannot help you to become the atom and you have to become this little atom within yourself as yogananda said every atom is dowered with individuality but that little atom within yourself is that which has somehow produced this body and if you think of your body as little realize this too that it is midway in size between the smallest thing in the universe and the largest there's really no such thing as space there's no, no such thing as large or small but at the very smallest truth center is everywhere as i said truth is everywhere god is I'm saying this wrong. Truth and God are center everywhere, circumference nowhere. And so this idea of uh, having a body, of having a, uh, uh, a mind, all this is produced by the reasoning mind. Be suspicious of the mind. I know when I was a child, I used to play games with myself and with others i would use reasoning and i had a fairly good mind i could reason very cleverly but i enjoyed reasoning absurdly and i did it in order to persuade myself to convince myself that by reason i would not find the truth i could come to all sorts of conclusions but how did i know they were true how did i know that any conclusion i reached was true it depends reasoning depends on a premise and if the premise is false then uh, the reasoning will be false but the premise is still within the box of your own mind break out of that box and the premise no longer exists if you see smoke on a hill you may say oh, there's a fire but it may be only a cloud your reason can't distinguish between the two intuition would know immediately there are higher aspects of 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 uh, understanding in other words the intuition will lead you straight to the truth and the intuition really depends upon the heart there is more understanding in the heart than there is in the brain hard to understand because science tells you it's only a um, pump to pump blood through your body it has much more uh, truth in it than that there was a woman who had an artificial heart put in her body and she wanted very much to understand who the person had been who gave her this heart because she found all of a sudden that with this new heart she had new desires she wanted chicken she'd never wanted chicken before 
She liked different things that she'd never thought of before, and she discovered finally, after a great deal of effort, that it had been a young man who had died, and he had had those tastes. But the heart is a much more subtle instrument than most people think. When you feel a thing, like when I read Yogananda's autobiography of a yogi, many things he wrote were completely against my all, all, all my experience of life and against my reason. But I knew in my heart he was true. I knew it was right because I knew he was true. I could not imagine him saying an insincere, insincere thing. So I knew from my heart. But I remember one time I had a dream, a very interesting dream, because I was flying. And in my dream, I was trying to think this thing through. I said, well, people don't fly. Maybe I'm just dreaming. And so I tried with my dream reason to figure out whether I was dreaming or not. And after a long series of uh, ratiocination, you might call it, I finally reached the reasonable conclusion that I was doing something unusual, but in fact, still, I was awake. What was my astonishment a moment later to wake up and find that it had, it had been a dream after all. And so this world, according to the reason of this world, because it's based on premises and we know from experience and from sense experience, this is so, this is so, therefore that is so. And all that is uh, real seems to be rational. This is Hegel's premise, in fact. All that is real is rational and all that is rational is real. It's not true. Your reason can tell you all sorts of things that are simply not so. And I, as I say, used to enjoy as a child using my reason wrongly in ways that everybody would laugh. I didn't want to trick them, but I wanted to convince my mind that by reason alone I would not achieve truth. When I was trying to find truth, I began seriously seeking truth as a, a conscious goal when I was 13. And I thought to become an astronomer first, but I thought, what difference does it make to me how many galaxies there are? Well, they didn't know in those days that there were galaxies, but so many scientific truths that are just mental. They don't touch you. I thought, no, what I really want is to be inspired. I want happiness. This, to me, will be my truth. And so I decided that my truth would be based on this simple premise. Will it lead me toward greater happiness or will it lead me away from that happiness? Will it give me greater suffering? And that is the guideline that I have proposed in all my writings. That which will give you more bliss will be right for you. And that which will take bliss away from you will be wrong. And people will get all excited thinking that if you're being very selfish in this, well, enlightened selfishness embraces the happiness of everybody. So it's not selfishness in an egoic way. But to be selfish in a spiritual way means to understand that unless I can have happiness, what have I got to give other people? Unless I have love, how can I help give love to other people? I must have first that which I'm seeking to help others to have. And so the final morality and the final and highest reason is to understand that we come from joy, we live for joy, and in that sacred joy, we will melt again someday. Joy to you.